Hey everyone, thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Ashley Wilson. I'm one of the account executives here at NGP Van. My name is Ramsey Reed. I'm the Midwest Regional Director at the DNC. All right, and today we're just going to be going over 10 tips for running an effective campus. Great. Uh oh. <laughs> we'll figure this out in a second. <laughs> Just trying to figure out the slides. Give us one second. There we go. There All right. Go. <laughs> all right. So yeah, we just introduced ourselves. So just reminder that we are all in. Um, you guys are all in listening only mode. And if you want to join in the conversation, please join on Twitter and by tagging at NGP Band. And if you have any questions, you know, feel free to put them in the GoToWebinar chat box. And keep them friendly. Keep them nice. <laughs> right. We're going to be nice. So yes, definitely. We're sure everyone will be <laughs> to us. All right. So, Ramsey, what do you think about, like, why should we be canvassing? There's a million reasons why we should be canvassing. Um, but most simply, it's because it works. Right. Uh, of course. You know, when you meet someone in person, it means a lot more than just hearing them talk on the phone right. or seeing a picture of them. It's not complicated when you're talking face to face with someone, right. it means more and mm -hmm. it's more effective for persuading them or asking them to go vote yep. for all of the reasons that you would want to talk to someone about the importance of voting or the importance of voting for democratic candidates. Face to face makes a much better, more impactful, um, longer term impact on our voters and our elections. Definitely, definitely, definitely agree. So yeah, well, I guess we just mentioned all of the reasons why right here um, in terms of why, you know, you should be canvassing. Hopefully everyone is getting their folks and their volunteers ready now. So, cause you know, it's never too early to start. So definitely, hopefully you guys are getting some tips today so that way you guys can get ready for, you know, canvassing through November. <laughs> it's true, it's true. And, and it's not just November, it's about 2020. Definitely. And actually, let's not forget 2019. We all have mayoral elections, there are school board elections. Right. Voting is habit building. It's about being a good civic steward of your community. And the way that we can build for the long term is by engaging people every election that we possibly can about the importance of voting and talking to them face to face about that and the issues that matter to us in our neighborhoods and our communities so that we can build habits for voters uh, and for our, our, uh, our folks who are gonna be voting for Democrats, not just in 2018, but, but every year that yep. we possibly can. Yep, definitely. And canvassing also helps because this is a way for you to test out like, you know, what's important to your constituents, right? What's important, what's going on in your neighborhood. So, you know, being able to go door to door and ask someone like, what issues are really important to you? Um, you know, what do you think I should be doing as an elected official or, you know, whoever we're supporting? So this is a way just to kind of gain some insight into um, what your community feels. A hundred percent. It's, this is, it's, you know, obviously very intuitive, but to just spell it out, Canvassing allows you to have a two-way conversation with someone. It's not just passive, uh, you know, you know, distributing your message over media or having someone hear it, but it's actually getting a chance to ask them about it, to see what their reaction is like, to see what, you know, what their facial expression is when right. you talk about what healthcare access and affordability means to you and, right. and what and to your family and why you need those democratic candidates you're canvassing on to, to go out and get elected. So, right. you know, I I remember in twenty seventeen in the Virginia coordinated campaign you guys might recall that uh, Ed Gillespie, the Republican candidate, was running a really cynical ad campaign on TV about MS-13. And, you know, we were getting information from volunteers who were talking to voters on the doors saying, you know, we, we talked to this voter and they said, does Ralph Northam really support MS-13 gangs? Is he really like trying to get more MS-13 gangs on the streets in, in Virginia? And obviously not. <laughs> Ralph Northam does not support MS-13 gangs. And, and this was an opportunity for us as a campaign to hear loudly and clearly from the voters who we were targeting in an individual way that 
Ed Gillespie's message and his intensive spend on TV was penetrating into the electorate, and it was right. something that we needed to respond to. And it wasn't just polling, and it wasn't just consultants who were, right. you know, running paid phone calls, but it was actual, real, live feedback from our volunteers right. talking to our voters about, you know, what they were thinking about. And it was a chance to correct the record in a face-to-face -face way, right. um, and just a way to show that you, we care. Right? Yeah. Like, we care, we want to know what's going on, so this is how we'll be able to get that insight. Totally. So there's always, like, a lot of doors to knock on. You're not going to knock on all the doors. You wish you, you know, you hope you can, but it doesn't always happen. So the plan is to always try to build a very strong field operation. Um, and so, you know, again, starting early, we'll be able to, you'll be able to do that. Totally. Canvassing, as you all know, and I know that the audience here is, is mixed, some, some of you might be working on your first campaign, some of you are veterans who are managing large operations and are spending uh, substantial, um, substantial portions of your budgets in terms of building out your field programs, but whether or not you are you know, in either one of those boats, the most important thing to remember about canvassing and about a strong strong ground game is that canvassing is really hard. It is. If you're in Texas and you're trying to get a volunteer to go out in August when it's 105 degrees in San Antonio, right. that's hard. Yeah. If you're in North Dakota and you're trying to get a volunteer to go knock doors in a March blizzard, right. that's really hard. Yeah. And no matter what, you've got to be able to invest early and engage and train your volunteers to yep. be able to understand why canvassing, how to do it, get comfortable with the script, start to get a rhythm for what the conversations are like, right. and build your program to be able to ramp ex exponentially closer to the election. Definitely, for sure. So all right, so now we're gonna start on our 10 tips for running a better canvassing operation. So number one, uh, quality over quantity. Um, so what would you say about that in terms of like, I mean, do you think you should get a whole bunch of people? Like what are your thoughts on the whole quality? Well, I mean, this is a cliche, but it's true. Garbage in, garbage out. <laughs> right. uh, if you're, you know, if you've ever, uh, if, you, if you cook and you just try and make a hundred cheeseburgers at once, it's going to be a lot easier to get a bunch of pretty cheap patties from the store and crank them out and have them all be well done. Right. And then all of your guests are going to be sort of chewing on these mediocre <laughs> burgers with the cheese off to the side. But no one's gonna walk away feeling like that meal made a real impact. Same thing with canvassing. Right. If you are engaging voters in a really smart, effective way that has a real thoughtful conversation and a, a quality uh, engagement, right. you're gonna have a much better impact on those voters. Definitely. And yeah. so, yeah, so yeah. that's to me always quality over quantity. Now, the field director in me says, get those doors, hit those goals, let's get them, let's get them all done. We can do it, we can do as many right. as we possibly can. So you've gotta find that balance. You've gotta set goals that are realistic and then push yourself to be able to hit those goals and no. do it well. Yeah, and I think that just goes back to the starting early also, right? So starting now versus trying to push out like so many people out the door in October. Doing starting it now, that way you can have those conversations early. 100%, and, and, and it really gets back to your path to victory. When you are talking about how canvassing can make an impact as part of your field program to get the number of votes that you need to win, you've got to think about not only how many doors can you knock, but the impact of what those doors and those conversations actually have. Yep. And so it's a give and a take, but you've got to think about your training, you've got to think about um, all of the, the work that goes into making uh, an effective conversation, and then you've got to build early so that you can scale to the maximum uh, ability that you have with your program and with your volunteers. Definitely. Writing smarter scripts. Uh, making sure that you're writing a script that really shows what the, the candidate believes in is definitely what you should strive for, right? Instead of just saying like, okay, who are you gonna vote for? And then just going to the next door. So being able to write something that really brings out what the campaign and the candidate stands for is the best way to go about this. 100%, and, and you know, I think it's very easy, and I've been on campaigns where the script almost becomes an afterthought right. where you're like you're you, you're recruiting your volunteers you're getting your canvas set up you're trying to do everything you possibly can you're doing your confirmation calls trying to get everyone there you're trying to get all your materials ready and then you know how much time did you really spend thinking about what the actual conversation guide is going to be for for your volunteers or the voters and yeah. so 
you know, you should be thoughtful around what that script is. And, and in 2012, on the presidential reelection campaign in Ohio, Barack Obama had just saved the auto industry. Right. Uh, had had done a ton to invest in saving auto jobs and the script in every community in the state was Barack Obama invested to save the auto industry right. saved 800,000 jobs in Ohio that are related to you know either the the actual auto manufacturers themselves or the supply chain folks and every volunteer in the state could talk about the impact on those jobs in their economy uh, in their local community because everyone knew someone who had a car, or you know, had had uh, a friend who worked in a in a supply uh, manufacturing facility, or you know, had sort of the knock on effect of what that was in their community, and they could relate it back to where they were. And uh, the Ohio voters understood that the impact of the auto industry was huge on the on the Ohio economy. And so, you know, that was something that was really effective for every community, for every volunteer, talking to every voter, and then everyone was able to then personalize it to them because that's the other piece of of scripts, right? How you know, at you, and you should talk about this. You know how you relate it to who you are and why right. you're supporting the candidate is yes. sort of the most important piece. You've got yes. to set your volunteers up to succeed. Right, right. So when you get to a door, say, "Hey, here's why I'm supporting this person. Here's why I'm knocking on doors on this very hot day, very rainy day, whatever the you know case may be." Um, and then be able to facil facilitate that conversation that way. Just being able to say, "This is what I stand for. This is why I'm supporting this person." Totally. A again, the take advantage of the medium of a face-to-face -face conversation. If you can't put your canvasser in a position to succeed by being able to talk about it in their shoes, then you're not you're you're ruining the opportunity that you put in all of this hard work to create. Right. So you've got to create scripts that allow effective conversations mm -hmm. to take place and to do it in a in a sort of a genuine way. Right. Meet voters where they are. Um, and I guess that goes back to what we were just talking about. Um, basically saying that, you know, find out what's important to your volunteer, well, to the volunteers and as well as to the voters, and then being able to talk to them in that way. So like you just mentioned with the, the cars, um, you know, in Ohio and the, um, the uh, auto industry, um, being able to meet them and that, at that level, knowing that something very important to them, to, to the voters, so they're being able to talk to them about that. Totally, and, and being prepared to engage with a voter who might not feel exactly the same way you as <laughs> a enthusiastic Democratic supporter <laughs> might when you're right. talking to them. There's right. a reason that we are trying to persuade these voters to support Democrats. Right. They don't always vote for Democrats. Right. So we've got to prepare our our volunteers and our canvassers to be able to engage with those voters in a way that meets them where they are yep. and prepares them to react and have a conversation in a way that's not going to alienate them because right. we might want to come back to them. We might want to hit them with a digital ad. We might want to send some mail. We might want to be able to persuade them over TV. So we've got to be able to continue to position ourselves to make inroads with persuadable voters and also to turn out our our sporadic Democrats uh, in a way that, that doesn't alienate them, and, and so we've got to incorporate that into our training. Definitely. And making a plan, so GOTV scripts, making sure that it includes, um, you know, the voters, like voting plan, right? So once you're talking to them about what issues are important to them, will they support your candidate, then being able to ask, all right, well, do you know when you're going to vote? What time of day? How are you getting there? Do you need a ride? Do you know where your uh, polling location is? Um, and that helps with making sure that the person gets to the polls. Um, you know, I guess it shows that if you if the person has a plan, the likelihood is that they'll definitely go vote. Totally. And so this gets back to the part of your canvas that you're actually you know, the part of your campaign that your canvas is fitting into, right? Because canvassing is a tactic. It can be part of your persuasion work. It can be part of your turnout work. But this is about uh, engaging scripts that help maximize the impact of those turnout conversations. And, right. and it's all about making a plan. You know, the Analyst Institute has really good stuff. Um, I encourage you to go to their website and search their, uh, search their database of tools. You can reach out. Uh, to Michelle, um, you can follow up with, with us uh, to get some of this information in terms of best practices for GOTV scripts. But again, this is about the social pressure, you know, asking people 
to make a plan. When are they going to be voting? Who are they going with? How are they getting there? When they actually go through that process of thinking it through, then yep. they're going to be much likely to do it. It, it brings right. me back to uh, you know not wanting to do my homework and my <laughs> parents you know asking me when was I am, am I going to be doing it upstairs? Or am I going to be doing it in the living room? Right. But no matter what, I was doing it. I right. was doing my homework. So right. same thing with voters. Yep. Going mobile with minivan. So I, I told Ramsey before that he's gonna have to take over that part because the last time I was doing some intensive canvassing was before minivan and when we all had to do our um, printing out our turfs and putting the data in, like staying up all night doing all of that. So this is all, I wish minivan was available when I was doing it. <laughs> I am obsessed with minivan. <laughs> You know, right. I uh, when I go to the library, I'm thrilled that I don't have to go over to the shelf and pull out a card <laughs> and look up the location with the Dewey Decimal System. <laughs> I also feel that way when it comes to canvassing. I'm thrilled that that there is mobile canvassing options with Minivan yeah. and with no, distributed awesome. work, and uh, it's 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 really awesome. So, let's talk about mobile canvassing. Mm -hmm. um, there are you know not every volunteer has a smartphone but a lot of them do. Right. Um, not every volunteer wants to walk around for a couple of miles in a hot afternoon and knock doors. That doesn't mean we don't recruit them to knock doors. So we're not gonna let that stop us in terms right. of, of recruiting and setting up mobile canvassing. Um, not every campaign wants to spend money on paper and toner and printers yeah, and clipboards and pens. And, and you don't have to. <laughs> you and don't so, have to anymore, exactly. Right. So you can improve, you can improve your operation. Yeah. So, you can get more efficient, you can be more adaptable, um, and you don't have to recruit data entry captains. You as a field organizer don't have to sit around stacking up your your uh, walk yes. packets and entering that data. Oh yeah, I don't, I don't miss those days. And then <laughs> you don't have to cut turf. Right, definitely. Which is amazing. Incredible, <laughs> and the more canvas shifts you recruit, the more uh, time intensive that becomes. Yeah. So think about preparing yourself to scale your program in an effective way and how your time can be best used. Right. Is it recruiting volunteers and training them to have quality conversations or is it cutting turf and entering data? Right. I think that that question speaks for itself. All right, well, I guess we touched on the stop cutting turf. <laughs> it's true. So distributed canvassing. If you are not familiar with distributed canvassing, please become familiar with distributed yes. canvassing. I will give a super quick overview of it right now, but you should follow up with Michelle. You should follow up with your point of contact at VAN to get more information, get the official mini manual, which is a phenomenal document. Yes, Shout out to it? NGV VAN for <laughs> putting together incredible training materials on that. But the basic gist of distributed canvassing is that it automates turf cutting. Yep for you, it allows volunteers to enter a list number, any list number, and pull the closest doors to wherever they are. Right. You as a campaign get to customize how many doors, the targets, they just pull the doors closest to wherever they are, and then voila, they've got them on their phone. Right. They don't have to go, you don't have to cut them a specialized turf. Right. You don't have, they don't have to go pick it up from you. Yep. You can focus on recruiting them, getting them to knock those doors, and then following up with them to make sure that the conversations were good and that you're yep. debriefing it, um, and that you are building these sustained groups of, of canvassers. Yep. You know, not every canvasser is gonna be able to use this. Not every canvasser uh, is gonna be ready to for the first time, but not every canvasser is ready to go knock doors on a paper pack. And I remember right. the first time I knocked doors with paper on a clipboard, it was, I was fumbling, I didn't right. know the to map. order my pages in the yes. right way. Right. Everyone goes through a learning curve. Same thing in distributed canvassing. Just because it's a different learning curve doesn't mean that we shouldn't do it. Right, but it, again, I think it just takes up, um, you know, less time for the field organizer, the field director, to really train up your canvassers now because you don't have to spend all night, all day cutting turf. So I think it just, it's a win-win. Totally, totally. And, and, and I think that every campaign is different. So you've got to think about how can this best fit into your campaign. Mm -hmm. If you are a candidate running for school board or for a state house and you have a small district and you've got a few really strong core volunteers who you know want to be able to knock doors regularly for you, you can talk to them about making sure that they're committing to knock a certain number of doors and you are empowering them to go out and do it on their own. So right. you've got a super volunteer who wants to knock doors every Tuesday and Thursday while their kids at soccer practice in the area. Give them a couple hundred pieces of lit and ask them to go do that. Give them a list number and then they're ready to go. Right. And then they can come back to you when there's more lit. Yeah. But 
Um, but there are a ton of different opportunities to incorporate distributed canvassing into your program to be able to modernize, make it more efficient, more effective, and, and to speed up all of the, the really tough rote uh, work that you don't necessarily have time to do because you're running a lean operation. Right, definitely. <laughs> All right. So, in terms of of uh, you know thinking about distributed canvassing, whether you've got a suburban or a rural turf, um, you want to be prepared to put your volunteers in the best position to knock the doors that are closest to them. And and I think that that's one of the most important things about distributed canvassing. If if you are a volunteer in a rural community, you're a field organizer who's got rural turf, or you're running a campaign in a rural state senate district, are you really gonna ask a volunteer to drive 45 minutes to your field office or your campaign office and then drive another 45 minutes to get to their doors and then that's an hour and a half that they could have spent knocking those doors? Definitely. You're missing out on, on those opportunities to engage voters. And right. so you've gotta think about how can you incorporate this to get uh, the most productivity out of your supporters. And, mm -hmm. and in rural settings, it's, it's really helpful. Um, but same thing in urban settings. You've got volunteers who are in apartment buildings. You've organized in New York. Yeah, you know definitely. how hard it is to get into some of those apartment buildings. <laughs> For sure, and it's also where the volunteers feel comfortable, right? So being able to say, okay, do you, you know, is this area work for you? Is this your neighborhood? Are you comfortable in this area? And then they all get a list for that. So, you know, being able to have everyone feel comfortable and, um, and be able to be productive. A hundred percent. You know, you've got to get your validators engaging for your candidates to the voters who, uh, with whom they're most effective. Exactly. Oh, data. <laughs> the fun part that I don't miss anymore. Um, but yeah, with minivan now, the canvassers can just be able to put in their results right on their phone, um, and it goes right back into van versus staying up all night, again, putting in all the data from all of those walk sheets. So I think, again, an amazing feature. <laughs> if you're a field organizer or you've been a field director and you know what it feels like to be sitting in your canvas results hitting refresh, 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 <laughs> enter that data, are we going to get there, are we going to hit our goal? Right. You can actually do it in real time. You right. can see your volunteers knocking doors as it happens. Yep. You can, all right, you know, you're, say you're a regional field director and you just had, you know, five of your field organizers all launch canvases and they told you how many volunteers they sent out. An hour later, you can actually look and see how many volunteers are knocking those doors. Is that data coming in in exactly. real time and get a better sense of, you know, did that canvas launch actually go the way that you it thought plans. that it did right. because you weren't there. So it allows accountability uh, and it allows real time understanding of what's happening, which I think is a game changer for organizing management and for campaign uh, quality. Mm -hmm. Creating branch scripts. So um, going back to, I think, just creating a really good script, being able to have a script that shows, okay, if the, uh, if the voter says yes, no, maybe, being able to engage them and have an, you know, a, a different response, be ready for those. So if they say yes, all right, here's your next um, point that you should bring up. Um, if they say no, okay, maybe this is the end of the conversation. But being able to create brand scripts is really helpful. We've all struggled with how do you format a script on a piece of paper that allows for different conversations based on what those answers are. And you've right. got indents, you've got bold, <laughs> you've got if Q1, skip down. This allows you, I think, in a much more intuitive way to right. walk through with volunteers. Okay, this, vo this voter responded this way then where do you go from there? Right. And so that doesn't mean that you're training your volunteers to be staring at their phone while they're having that conversation, right. but it does mean that you can, in an in a interactive way, go through that training and walk them through, okay, let's role play this out and right. to actually, in a more, I think, substantive way, get a better understanding for, for what those conversations look like and, mm -hmm. and, and build that out in a, in a better training way. Definitely. Oh, and this is an example of what the, like, the preview of a branch script. So this is something that everyone, as they are building scripts in minivan, will need to check out and play around with. You know, I think that you know, every van user knows that the best way to become great at van is to play around with it and to yeah. actually use it. And so I'm not going to pretend that we are going <laughs> to teach you how to build a good branch script right now. No. That's, that's not how it's going to work. But what I do encourage you to do is to, fig is to get, onto, uh, get onto your van account, build yeah. out a script, test it out, see what it looks like, play around with it. If you have questions, reach out to your point of contact at van, ask them for their advice, their best yep. practices. I'm sure they can provide you with some good samples and templates and guidance 
uh, to build that out best. Yeah, for sure. Managing your canvas. Setting your canvas serves up for success. So I think we touched on this, of course, already with the training. Training definitely matters. And, and I believe with the new features of minivan and all of, you know, all of the features we just talked about, you can spend a lot more time actually training your volunteers, making sure that they're ready, making sure that they feel comfortable when they're going to doors, um, and then just making sure that they have all of the, the points that need to be made when they get to the door. 100%. And I think there's a couple things that I would really underscore when it comes to training and canvassing. Number one, all of your trainers, whether it is a volunteer canvas captain or a field organizer, or if you are a candidate in a local race and you're launching your own canvases, you should write out your annotated training agenda just as you would with right. any meeting that you are running in a good way. Mm -hmm. What are the points you want to make? How long are you going to spend on each of those? And then that's gonna help you make sure that your training is 15 to 20 minutes at the most, 25, and that you are getting those volunteers in, you're getting them trained, and you're getting them on the doors. Right. If you're launching in person. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Build out an annotated training agenda. Make sure you understand what it is that you're trying to get across, that you're able to drive that message, and that you are planned and organized in terms of what that looks like. Number two, role play. Right. If yeah. you've knocked 100 doors or a thousand doors, if you go up to that first door when you're canvassing, you're gonna have some butterflies right. before you talk to that voter who you've never talked to before. You're like, oh, it's 11 o'clock on a Sunday morning. Am I gonna wake them up? Are am they I gonna, gonna get yelled at Am me? I gonna get yelled at? <laughs> no, you're not. I mean, occasionally you might, but it's gonna be rare. But, but the best way to get over those jitters is to role play it out, right. to practice that conversation. Right. Right. You want to make sure that you have a chance to have your volunteers you know, prepare, engage, right. prepare, role play, switch. Mm -hmm. And if every training includes, includes a role play where someone gets to actually mock out the conversation as a volunteer and a voter, yeah. your conversations are going to be so much better. Yep, definitely. Incentivize honesty. Um, so wanting to make sure that, you know, when you get to the door that you are, you know, being honest with your, with the voters, um, making sure, again, it's just that, that personal, touch and one-on-one -on -one face to face conversation. There's no point in doing this if you're just going to pretend that you <laughs> knocked a whole bunch of doors that you didn't knock or you're going to pretend you had a bunch of good conversations that you right. didn't have. What right. we're trying to do are actually win these campaigns. Right. So the the importance of culture in terms of the accountability that you have for setting goals for yourself and holding yourself accountable right. is important. But so too is the the maxim that you can never ever ever fake data, and that's the single most <laughs> right. unacceptable thing you can ever do on a campaign. Oh yeah, it definitely. is the number one fireable offense <laughs> on campaigns is faking right. data. That's not okay because yeah. this informs what we do and the strategic choices that we make. And right. so we've got to and who else we talk to for the duration of the campaign. So wanting to make sure that the volunteers and your campusers know for sure that. We need this data. If you talk to someone for an hour and you only talk to five people, that's okay. Just be honest and let us know. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, you've got to gotta let people know. Incentivize honesty and mobile canvassing helps you do that. Yep. So this gets to tracking accountability with Minivan Manager. Yeah, Minivan Manager is a tool that you can add on to your um, van access that would let you see real time where your people are. So if you have a paid campus operation, you wanna make sure everyone's actually knocking on doors, you can actually see that in real time. So if you see someone sitting in a corner and they haven't moved and all of a sudden their door numbers are still going up but it looks like they're at the Burger King, um, it's time to call them and tell them to come back in and let's have a talk. That's right, that's right, that's right. Maybe you've got a summer fellow who is only doing it because their parents want them to and they didn't get a summer job and they're not actually knocking those doors. Or maybe you are running a paid canvas operation and you've yeah. got folks who are cutting corners. Yep. Um, you know, I think for the most part, the volunteers who are coming in to knock doors for their candidate for your candidates are doing it because they want to. Right. And if they don't want to, they won't show up. Yeah. And yep. so this is this is not for every canvasser. Mm -hmm. uh, it's but it is really helpful in terms of quality control. Yeah. Uh, for for the parts of your campaigns that need it. Yep. And, and I think that's a really important thing to think about as a campaign manager, as an organizing manager, in terms of running more effective canvases. Yeah, definitely. 
Uh, so this is just like a picture of what minivan manager would look like. So you'll see like the dots, each person will have a dot on them. You'll see how many doors they've knocked on um, the last time, like, you know, um, what was it like the contact rate, things like that. So this is super helpful again for, uh, you know, paid campus operations to make sure that everyone is doing what they're supposed to be doing. Right, and so this is a pretty easy way for you to spot potential flags. Right. So you might look at the yellow dot canvasser. Right. They've knocked four doors. Uh, their last sink was at 8.59 a.m. Meanwhile, Jen Willis just synced at 3.17. Right. If you launched all of them, the uh, <laughs> you might be curious what's going on. Right, where, where is where is, where is Torvik? Torvik? Are they Are they on just, are they on low battery mode and they're right. saving power and they're gonna sync later? Or are they at Starbucks? Right or are they at Starbucks? <laughs> and, and so it's an opportunity for you to actually see the data, mm -hmm. engage, check in, send a text, make a phone call, right. figure out what's going on with your canvassers. Right. Number 10, send your candidate out. Definitely, I know for sure, sending out your candidate to go talk to voters, people really love that when they see the candidate. And of course, you know, like with the note about balancing that against your fundraising needs, one thing I know we've done, like when I was, you know, working on campaigns is that, let's say the candidate had a house party, so it was like a fundraising house party, that same day we'll have them canvas the neighborhood and then go right to the campus, um, to the, to the, um, House party, so it just you know win-win. But being able to have the candidate out was always super helpful. Definitely, this is so specific to your campaign. Right. Obviously, if you are a candidate who's running in a large statewide race, it's going to be really hard for you to knock three million doors <laughs> right. if you're running for governor. Yeah, exactly. But if you're running for school board and you've got a win number that's 5,000, you can make real progress. Yeah. And you can really get through to voters and you can do it directly. Yeah, state um, ledge candidates. I know in upstate New York, we're knocking on doors themselves and, you know, we're able to do that. So definitely it's, it's possible, it's doable, and I think it's super effective totally you also have to think about what it's like to be a candidate and if there are candidates out there on this on this uh, watching right now you don't always want to be making fundraising calls a hundred percent of the time you also want to talk to voters yeah. and you get a lot out of that you get a better understanding of your electorate you get real anecdotes that you can use when you are you know giving your stump speech right. at, at a dinner or you can talk to your donors about what it's like out there talking to people. Right. Uh, you can actually get a better understanding of what people want to hear and mm -hmm. refine your message. Um, there's a ton of reasons that you should, as a candidate, be knocking doors. Not the least of which that if you are, say, running for state house, I know there's a lot of caucuses out there that have actual, you know, real specific candidate voter contact goals mm -hmm. as a condition on driving in investment into the campaign. So. Yeah. There is nothing that speaks more to the candidate's commitment to work their butt off to right. win their race than getting out there and knocking doors. And seeing them knock on and, doors. Yeah. And putting in the, the blood, the sweat, and the tears uh, you know, out there in, in the summer knocking doors you know, every day after work, going out, talking to, to people in the community. That means something yeah, to, and, to and, stakeholders and, and the voters. And the voters. Love it. Yeah, voters love it. Because after a candidate comes by, they're like super happy that, hey, you know what, he or she just actually came to my door to hear what my concerns were, so. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I think this gets back to the heart of what we're all in this for. Right. And it's to make people's lives better. And if we don't put our candidates in a position to actually understand what their constituents need and the problems that they're facing, right. then we're not doing our job. Exactly. Definitely. All so right. Question questions. time. All right. Do we have any questions so far? Let's see. We have a question in from Twitter. Okay. It says, hey, NGP Van, do you have tips on how much canvassing to do in a small, non-contested primary? I would say, I mean, I don't know exactly. I guess it all depends on how many people are voting and all of those types of stats. But I would say definitely go knock on doors. People want to see you out there. You know, want to make sure that you're still connecting to your constituents. What do you think? Yeah. I, I, if you're in an uncontested primary, you're in your general election. 
So yeah. start thinking about what you need to be doing in your path to victory to win your general election and start to engage that now. If, if you don't have to run a primary contest and you don't need to engage your, your primary voters and you can start to do your persuasion work yeah. and start to build relationships, longer term relationships with those sporadic supporters who you need to be able to turn out, yeah. you should start doing that now. So yeah. I don't think there's any reason why you shouldn't start canvassing early on whether or not you're contested in your primary. Yeah, let's, let's see, see if we can get these. If we can do that. There we okay. go. There's also some questions that people sent in earlier in those packets in front of you. Oh, okay. Kind of shuffle through. Okay. Paula asked, will you be addressing the way to get a campaign from Vote Builder into Minivan? Um, so it's just a matter of well, a couple of things. You can check out your our mini manual on our website, so on ngpband.com. You could check that out. I believe that will give you the you know help to pushing lists from your vote builder into mini van. Um, and then also, if you have any questions, definitely reach out to your state party and your county party that might be able to help. That's right. So Paula, if you already know how to uh, get a canvassing list pulled together on paper you'll know, you'll see at the bottom on your report format, there's a list number. And you just, it's the same thing. You just take that list number and you put it into minivan. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's pretty simple. Yeah. Uh, check out your minivanual. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not hard to do. You'll be able to figure that out, no problem. So Renee asked, if using minivan, how can I verify that the information collected has in fact uploaded to van? So <laughs> when you're using minivan, you actually have to commit the data. Right. So when a canvasser syncs their minivan data into minivan, it doesn't automatically just go in. Yes. You actually get a chance to go in and make sure that that is data that you do in fact want to commit into enter data as uh, you know you can verify it. So if right. you've got someone who's just clicking yes, 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 and it's 100% contact rate and everyone supports your candidate, <laughs> you know that's not real, right. so you're not gonna commit that data. So you do have an opportunity to do it, you do have an opportunity to review it, and uh, that, is, that is part of the process to make sure that you can verify it before it goes in. Mm -hmm. All right, Vicki asks, if I am in a hot climate, how early on Saturday morning is too early to go out <laughs> canvassing? Oh, I don't know, that's a tr tricky one. Um, I mean, I say by like 10 o'clock, I think is reasonable. What do you think? I mean, I know some people are really hardcore and will have people out there by like 8 a.m. It depends on your community. So <laughs> yeah. you know what's too early in your right. community. If, if you know, you're a field organizer and you're trying to get a bunch of canvases launched in one day, it's not unusual to have a canvas launch meet at 9 o'clock. You do your training. You get 15 minutes. You're out on the doors by 9.30. That's okay. Yeah. When it comes to GOTV on a, on election day, oh, you yeah. want to catch people before work. Yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes you're you're launching canvases at, at seven o'clock and you're or six o'clock and yeah. you're you're getting up there. I mean, six o'clock's pretty early. Well, I, six o'clock is just you know to feed everyone. You get them some coffee, some donuts, all of that to to get them excited about going on doors. That's so right. That's right. <laughs> All right, uh, Vicky actually had another question. Collaborating with other candidates with crossover precincts, pitfalls. Both had primaries. Some balls may not want to canvas for other candidate. So this sounds like a political question, Vicky, uh, and I don't, I don't know if I can answer it without knowing who those other candidates are and what the precincts are like. So I'm gonna defer. You might be more brave, but yeah, no, I'm gonna defer on this one too. Okay. <laughs> All right, Matt is asking, uh, I'm the communications director for uh, the Mississippi Four Democratic nominee and the youngest African American ever elected to any legislature in US history. Wow, impressive, Matt. Sounds like you got a great candidate. Uh, Representative Jeremy Anderson of Moss Point, Mississippi. We have volunteers and people going into the field in the next 24 hours. So your question is, will we have access to this webinar video for dissemination in the near future as we did when we trained in T3 last year? It'll be out in about a week. In a week? It'll okay. Be to a couple days, yeah. So it's not that fast of a turnaround. It'll, it'll be out in about a week. Um, but the mini vanual is and, and available vanual. now. And the vanual is yeah. available now. Yeah, so definitely check those out. All right, Becky. 
Can you do a combined minivan and paper campaign? Yes. Uh, yes, you can. Yes, yes you can. <laughs> yeah. And you should. Right. Not every volunteer wants to use their phone or has a smartphone that can get to minivan. So definitely have a separate list, your minivan list, and your paper list. And you can create those and separate those out. That's right. So, uh, you know, some campaigns will have paper lists that they've cut and they just you as a volunteer, as a canvasser, can just take that list number and put it into minivan and just knock doors on minivan even though they've already cut list. If you're using distributed canvassing, you obviously, it's a different way, but but the, the you know, and, and you can't have paper on distributed canvassing and that, that's sort of the whole point, mm -hmm. but the I think the basic gist is that yes, you can and, and you should. You should be prepared to make sure that your supporters, your volunteers are able to engage and talk to voters in, in whichever way yeah. is most efficient and effective for your campaign and that you probably should be thinking about how to maximize your, your volunteer capacity into effective voter contact. Mm -hmm. So the other question that Becky had is how do I check and approve the minivan results when the campaign was not set up as a minivan campaign? So this is a question, again, check out the minivanual. It's got a whole section on committing the data uh, and you don't have to necessarily set up a distributed minivan campaign to be able to use minivan as a tool for traditionally cut turf. Right. All right, Rita has a question. My candidate and I are having technical problems with syncing. What technical support do you offer? So the support actually goes to your state parties. So Van um, in Vote Builder um, comes through the state party. So I would definitely reach out to your state party um, Van administrator for training, tech assistance, and everything like that. All right. Oh, next slide. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. I think we're, okay. I think we messed it up again. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> no. I think we just need to bring the mouse. Oh, oh. Do we? Yeah, okay. there we go. Oh, no. Oh, here we go. All right. So, our shameless plugs um, definitely check out um, ngpband.com to, you know, for tools and, well, I guess explanations on our tools and things like that, as well as requesting a demo. Um, check out mini manual and our manual and then um, as Rams brought up the analyst group for um, analyst Institute sorry for more information on uh, canvassing that's right I highly recommend all of those things if you are if you have any questions check that stuff out first there's gonna be a ton of information there that you're gonna find really useful and yeah. that is gonna answer a lot of the questions that you didn't even know you had so whether or not you're an experienced canvasser, peruse those materials, check this stuff out. You're gonna find opportunities to improve the work that you already have going. Uh, really great resources. Definitely encourage you to take advantage. Yeah, and then for anyone, again, with questions about like technical support, definitely reach out to your state parties if you have vote builder slash fan. Um, put in a support ticket. Um, you know, people will be there to help you with any questions you have. So thank you guys, thank you for joining us. I hope you guys all found this um, helpful. As Michelle mentioned, they, this will be available in like about a week or so, so that way you can check it out. And um, you know, again, feel free to reach out to us through our website, your state parties, and yeah, thank you, Ramsey. Thank you, this is great. <laughs> yeah.